Okay, we're filming a wrap up. As many of you may already know, hopefully by this channel in general, I just participated in this year's Booktubeathon, which is where you attempt to read seven books in seven days while completing seven different challenges. All of that is optional. You can really just read as much as you can or want for fun within that week. Really the most fun part is the community aspect of it. Overall, I'd rate the experience 10 out of 10. I love Booktubeathon. I love seeing people get excited about Booktubeathon and all the books they're reading. This year had a lot of different challenges that brought about really great recommendations. For example, book to movie adaptations that I wasn't as familiar with. So that was pretty fun. I'd rate my reading experience a six out of seven because that's what I completed. <laughs> I feel pretty excited about that just because I somehow managed to read this many in the schedule that I keep throughout the week, which is not uh, something that I thought I was gonna be able to do and is better than I did last year. So that was really my main goal was to try to do better than I did last year, and I feel really glad that I achieved that. I'm just gonna go over a little snapshot of my experience with each of the books. Overall, I felt really satisfied with my choices. I felt like there was a good enough variety to keep me interested in everything, um, and they weren't like so weighty that I felt like bogged down by reading them. All in all, some pretty good choices were made. The first book I read was Aftercare Instructions, and this is a book that I was really looking forward to reading. It does have a little bit of a heavier topic. It discusses the experience of abortion and um, the complexities that come with that. And I have to say, I was expecting, I mean, I spent a lot of my youth reading books in this nature, uh, basically like youth dealing with tough stuff, so like It Happened to Nancy and Jay's Journal and Cut and things like that. I was really into that and I felt like there were bits of this book that felt really unrealistic to me um, given my context of those heavier weighted books. I felt like um, some of the relational aspects in this book were not what I would expect or anticipate in real life. So um, I really enjoyed reading it. I felt like it kept me engaged throughout. I just think that I spent a lot of time hyping this book for myself and I bought it so long ago and was looking forward to it for so long that I just um, I felt a little bit let down by that. But it was still really great and it covers that topic pretty well. I just feel like um, like they shied away from some of the realness, if that makes sense. Just my opinion. The next book I read was Be Prepared and I loved this experience. I felt like going into it, I anticipated a little bit of like her being the outcast at this camp, but what I got out of it was a much more culturally enriching experience and something that felt a little bit more real and had a little bit more depth to it than I was anticipating, especially because this feels like it's geared towards a little bit of a younger audience, at least than younger than myself. Um, but I felt like it did a really great job like bringing in some of the realities of even just like being at camp such as the restroom and uh things of that nature and i thought it, i just really appreciated that it was like that and f dealt with a lot of the stuff that youth face and um i don't trying to fit in in a place that you feel like you don't really fit in um really great left me f with all the good feels this is also, I said this in my uh, vlogs, but she wrote Anya's Ghost, which is a graphic novel that I also really loved. So, um, nice little surprise there. I highly recommend this one if you're just getting into graphic novels or um, if for just like a book recommendation, especially for young girls. I think this is a good one. The next book is 
Dumplin'. And I've been highly anticipating this one for quite some time. I spoke a lot in my vlog about feeling upset that I haven't read many books depicting plus size characters, particularly plus size women. I know that I've never read something that really talks about plus size men. I think that this book did a really great job talking about that experience, but also not making it the core of the story. Uh, I mean, there was, I mean, it was a great, it had, it was connected to the core of the story, but I feel like I really appreciated that that wasn't the sole piece of her identity. And I mean, I don't want to give too much away about this story because I didn't look too much into this story. I just knew like some of the basics and um, I felt really pleasantly surprised by the experience because of that. So I'm not gonna go into so much detail, but I did really like this one. This is one that I came out feeling like I would recommend it. Um, I would also really love to read Puddin, but I have been seeing really not great reviews about it and sometimes that doesn't really matter to me, but um, I just don't want to squash my positive experience with this book, so we'll see. We'll see where that takes us. Um, this is a good one though, a real gem. The next book I read was Station Eleven and I really enjoyed this experience. This was like the curveball of all my books. It totally brought me into a whole other experience and um, was a little just, it was a bit more thought provoking than some of the other books that I had read um, earlier in the week. So it inherently took up a little bit more time. I knew going into it, it was going to take up a little bit more time. Um, my only regret is that I wished that I had read it last just because um, there's so much, there's just a lot of content within it that I feel like it would have been beneficial to finish this as, like have this be the last book I finish with just because of all of that. I do get a little bit of like medical anxiety uh, and this book definitely definitely will ignite that for you. So if that is not something that you enjoy dealing with, just because there is a whole um, flu epidemic that occurs and it's the entirety of the book. So I feel like if that is a lot for you, just know that going in, but it is a really great story and leaves you with a lot to think about at the end, so. This was a, this and Dumplin' were my highest rated, well, Paper Girls always trumps all, but these, those two were my highest rated of all the books. And then Paper Girls. I mean, I can never recommend this enough. I love this entire, uh, like every single volume that comes out, just, I don't, I, it's hard because I don't want to overhype it, but I freaking love these graphic novels. I feel like the, characters in it are just such badass women and um, I love that it incorporates like the supernatural and um, like time travel in a way that feels different from other graphic novels that I've read and the art is just so cool I just love it and they um, they have incorporated aspects of LGBTQIAP plus identity and uh, I was really excited to see that and um, they like sprinkle in bits of just like kind of heavier material that you wouldn't expect in a graphic novel like this so always a treasure five out of five at all times the best the last book I finished during booktubeathon was the gray bar hotel this I feel like I definitely had a few conversations on bookstagram about this book but um, this book was written while he was in jail and in prison. And um, that is true based on the content of the stories. Each chapter is a different story. Um, it varied in terms of like heaviness and um, kind of a lot. And also gave a really great perspective, I think. And... Uh, I'm glad this was more towards the end just because of that.
but it was also something that I was reading while reading Station Eleven and it did not give me like a great energy boost at the end of the readathon like I needed. I liked it, I just uh, may have read the two books at the wrong time. But I gave it either like a three or three and a half out of five on Goodreads, I believe. It was good, it just is, I. it's not, it's sort of like a one and done kind of read for me. I felt like that was an experience and then now I'm done. So the book I'm currently reading and have not yet finished is My Name is Leon and this was for my uh, Beautiful Spine challenge and unfortunately I didn't finish it. I talked about how I bought this book on a whim on Book Outlet and uh, after having delved into it even just a little bit this is like right up my alley and I don't know why I mean maybe I did read the synopsis and I'm just crazy because it like touches on foster youth. This is like something that I would seek out to read regardless of just browsing book outlets. So I'm really excited to finish this one and it will just be included in my August wrap up once I'm done. Those are all the books I read for Booktubeathon. I really appreciate you following along with this experience, all the daily vlogs and all the outtakes. Um, I will be filming a Q&A as well. I gathered questions for that on my Instagram and we'll be filming that shortly. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I will see you in another video. Thank you for watching.